Joshua chapter 7. I'm going to read this, this story. We'll read verse, all 26 verses in this, uh, in this chapter. Remember, uh, when I used to read scripture for dad, he used to, and I, <laughs> a couple times I got up and said, oh, we're going to read all, all 26 verses or all whatever he, he said. Or uh, I'll say, we're going to read the, complete ch- the whole chapter. And, he, and, and he'd say, don't say that. Okay, but they're probably going to catch on, you know. <laughs> but the, the fact is, uh, but the, however you want to look at it, we'll read the first 26 verses or we'll read chapter 7. However you want to look, whatever makes you feel good there. Uh, but <laughs> we're, uh, I, was, I was thinking, well, I'll, I'll cut this down a little bit. And it's like, but we kind of need the whole story here. Uh, so we'll read it. Follow along with me, if you would. Uh, Joshua chapter 7, begin reading in verse 1. It says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Haven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Sherebarim. And smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. And he uh, he and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side, Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall run us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel hath sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and disassembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. There is an accursed thing in the midst of thee, O Israel. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes. And the tribe of Judah was taken, and he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zerites, and he brought the family of the Zerites man by man, and Zabdi was taken, and he brought his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me how now what thou hast done, hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, 
I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them, and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth, in the midst of thy, my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his, and his sons, and his daughters, and his oxen, and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones, and burned them with fire, after they had stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. And let's pray. Dear Lord, please be with me as I preach. Please give me your strength and your power. Lord, please take what is said this morning. Please uh, challenge us to, to guard our lives, dear Lord, and walk close to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As you uh, know, we uh, very a fairly familiar story, the story of Achan, and uh, as we read there, if, uh, in in, uh, in thinking about Achan, a few things you probably uh, be able to tell part from the from the, the title, uh, but the idea that uh, when you read this story, a couple things you know you might look at it and say, well, <laughs> you know, oh, that Achan. You know what? You know what's wrong with him. You know what? You know what? Why? You know, uh, you know, he must have been a, a bad apple, or, you know, or a bad seed, or whatever you want to say. But if you look at it a little bit more, you <laughs> can't help but think that, you know what? I don't. I don't really think that he was. Uh, he was really a bad guy. In fact, I think he was. He was probably a good man. You know, he was, uh, in, 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 I don't want to get ahead of myself. You know, that's what I do every once in a while. Uh, but the thing is, uh, you know, I, I think we, we have here, he was, he was a good man. But he just, uh, he made a bad decision. He made a bad decision. And, but in, and before we get too judgmental with Aiken, and, you know, and, and, uh, but we need to realize that, that Christians nowadays, we can, we don't, if we don't guard our walk with the Lord, we can easily find ourselves making those bad decisions also. You say, well, does it have that, uh, you know, uh, is the consequences quite as steep? Well, you know, you're, you're not going to be burned and stoned, but you know what? It can cause devastating consequences in our lives, making those bad decisions. A few things about Achan. We see that it, Achan, he, he was one of God's children. He's one of the children of Israel. He was fighting for them. You know, and just like uh, the fact that uh, those of us that are saved, we're God's children also. I know I mention it, it fairly often. The fact that, uh, you know, the world, they like to say, you know, oh, we're all just all, we're all God's children. And that's not true. The fact that, that uh, those that are saved, they're God's children. And you see, the, the Achan, he was one of God's children. And as we say, you know, it, God, it, we as God's children, we, you know, if we're not careful, we can make bad decisions also. We see not only was he one of God's children, he was doing God's work. He was doing God's work. He, we see that he fought at Jericho. We see that's where he where he made this bad decision. He was he wasn't just uh, not not just a hearer, but he was a doer. James one twenty two said, "But be doers of the word and not hearers only." You know there are a lot of, of God's children today that, that they hear it, they know it, but they're not doers of it. 
and an idea that, that we need to, to be doers. But the thing is, that if we're busy doing and serving, that doesn't mean, that doesn't, uh, uh, we don't get a pass on the fact that, that the devil's not trying to tempt us. In fact, you're probably going to get, uh, you're going to get tempted more. The devil's going to try to stop you even more. But we need to be busy serving the Lord. When you say that, uh, through the, you've heard the, the three different type, types of people in the church. You know, those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that are just, <laughs> they stand around wondering what happened. And, uh, you know, you, and you think about it, it's like, well, that's, that's kind of true. The idea that over the years, you, uh, I've heard it. You know, if you've been in church long enough, you probably heard folks say it too. You know, they, they, they start getting away from God. They start uh, missing church, and they'll miss a couple weeks, and they'll miss two or three weeks. And, and then all of a sudden, they start coming around saying, you know what? I, I, I just don't, I'm not, I feel like I'm not getting fed because I don't feel like I'm part here anymore. And it's like, and, and, the, and you, the, the honest truth is, why would they? You know, you, you, don't, you don't come. You, you're, not, you're, not, you're not part of the group. You're not, uh, you're not coming and, and, and being fed. What, you know, why would you think you'd feel like you were part of it? Just like any other, you know, if you didn't go to whatever group, you name the, you know, uh, you know if, you, if you were playing uh, softball, you, you, you know, if you're on a softball team or whatever, something like that, and you didn't show up for three games, you know, you're probably not going to feel like you're part of it. You know, whatever it is. But, I was, you know, but, but the thing is, that wasn't Aiken's case. He was, he, was do, he was a doer. And, it, and we need to be doers and not just hearers. But we need to be careful, too, because, like I said, that's the ones that the devil wants to stop you. The devil wants to, uh, he's not really concerned about uh, too much, not much effort in, in uh, uh, the ones that, that are just sitting by the sidelines. Not doing anything, not being a witness like we talked about in Sunday school, not serving. But you know what, Aiken, you know, he was he was busy. Uh, he was one of God's children. He was he was doing God's work. And as we we kind of point out, he was he was a warrior. Aiken was a warrior. He wasn't afraid to stand and fight. He wasn't, you know, he was, uh, as, we, as we pointed out, uh, he was in Jericho. That's, uh, he was fighting. That's, that's where he made that bad decision. But we as Christians, we need to be warriors also. We need to be willing to, to take a stand. We need to not let the world uh, push us around, not let the world uh, <laughs> cause us to, uh, to compromise. And I'm not saying we need to be looking for a fight around every corner. But there's a difference between taking a stand for the Lord and, uh, and, and being confrontational and, like, you know, and just looking for a fight. He was a warrior. But not only that, we see that uh, the fact that, that he was tempted. He was tempted. What does he say? He talked about it in verse 21. He says, When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they're hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. He was tempted. <laughs> As you know, being, the, the sin wasn't in him being tempted. We know Jesus was tempted, but the thing is, he he was tempted, and he gave in to it, and he and he and he took that 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 garment and the silver and the gold and uh and and took it and we, as we just read and he and he hid it in his tent. Here he was he was fighting for he was a warrior he was fighting for the Lord. One of God's children. But you know, he was tempted, and he didn't turn to God and get the, uh, the, the strength and, the, uh, and the, the victory over that temptation. He gave in to it. And the fact that we need to make sure that we don't 
as we're serving the Lord. And as his children, we're serving him and, and we're taking a stand. We need to not become complacent in our day-to-day -day lives. And think that, that, you know, well, you know what, I've, I've, I've won a bat, I've had a so victory in this area. And, I, and I've, uh, with God's help, I had the victory over here. And, uh, you know, and I've, <laughs> I've cleaned up this area of my life. And, and you know what, with God's help, I'm doing good. You know what, I think I can take it from here. We need to make sure and guard ourselves that we don't start getting that mindset. It's like, you know what, I, I've grown a few steps. And, you know, I'm not like those baby Christians anymore. I'm not, you know, I, I've, I'm not like one of those that, that just started out and, they, you know, in fact, they need my help. And you can be a help to them. But we need to not think that we're so much better than them that we don't need God's help anymore. He was tempted. And we see that he fell. He, he, he gave in to the temptation. And we, and we need to not, uh, like I said, not become complacent. And thinking that we can handle the, the you know, handle the devil, and and whenever he tempts us, we can we can deal with it. And you know, if it gets to a certain level, well, then we'll get God involved. But we, you know, we we're doing pretty good up to a certain level. But then we see that his decision here. We see that Achan, he was the one with the secret sin. He was the one with that secret sin. We just read in verse twenty one. How that, uh, what he did, how he saw it, uh, saw the uh, the garment, and he saw the silver, and he saw the gold, and he gave into the temptation. And we we see that he gave into temptation, went and, and he took it and he hid it, instead of uh, you know he 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 gave into that temptation and he then he covered it up. He didn't he didn't confess it. He covered it up. We first John 1 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But the thing is, uh, you know, uh, he, he took the garment, he took the silver, he took the gold, and he covered it up. And we see that uh, the, the fact that, that we need to not cover up our sins, we need, to, we need to confess them, we need to get them right. And the fact that I don't, I, I, I guess I, in, in studying and getting my notes together, I couldn't help but the question came to my mind. It's like, you know, all the, <laughs> basically, uh, his family, he, he was killed. His family was killed. Everything burnt, stoned just and burnt. And, and I couldn't help but think, if, was there a point from, you know, if he, when he came back to, to camp, if he would have went <laughs> and, and said, you know what, I messed up. I, you know, and, uh, you know, and confessed what he did, what he did. I was wondering what, you know, what would have been the punishment then? Would it have been quite as severe? But I guess we don't know. We see, but we see that he, his decision, he was the one that had the secret sin. And what also came to mind is the fact that what he, <laughs> he, he hid it. He took the, the garment, he took the silver, he took the gold, and he buried it in the middle of the tent. It was buried in his tent. You think, well, here he, he knew he wasn't supposed to do it, but he did it. But, but you might ask, well, what good did that do? I know I, I asked that. It was like, you know, he couldn't wear the, wear the garment around. He couldn't, you know, he, he couldn't go uh, walking through camp in his new outfit. They would know, you know, he would have been... He would have been outed. Uh, he couldn't go, you know, the, the silver and the gold. You know what? It was hidden. It wasn't doing him any good. And you know what? When we bury our sin, you know what? It doesn't do us any good either. You know, we need to confess it. We need to get it right. Like well, Sam was mentioning in Sunday school, like, you know, uh, yes, no one's perfect. But when, we, <laughs> but when we do stumble, we need to get it right. When, you know, when we uh, find ourselves uh, having, uh, having sinned, we need to not try to hide it and just overlook it. We need to get it right with the Lord. Not only that, we see the defeat. 
Uh, he, he, he was the cause for Israel's defeat at Ai. He, we, see, we see that defeat in, in verses 4, 4, 5, and 6. So, so there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote of them about 30 and 6 men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. He was the cause of defeat. See you hear that, that 36 men died. 36 families uh, were affected and suffered because of what Achan did. And we need that, just another reminder of the fact that we think, you know what, I, I'll live my life how I want to. It doesn't affect anyone but me. And, and you know, that's a lie. It affects other people. It affects your family. It affects those around you. <coughs> it can affect uh, our church family. And the thing is that he was the cause of defeat at AI. You know, the secret sin uh, <laughs> is hindering uh, churches all across the country today. And, it, and I, before we, uh, you know, we say is hear something like you know, saying, you know what? Yeah, I remember back back then, and, and so and so, you know, in, in a situation or whatever. But you know what? I, what I can't help but think when 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 you hear, you know what? That secret sin being in churches. You know what? We need to think. The Lord <laughs> search our hearts. Right. Is it? You know what? You know what? The secret sin is hurting churches. And I think, Lord, is it? Is there secret sin in my life? You know, uh, examine our lives. Not, you know, it's easy to say, well, you know what, I, over there, I think, you know, uh, the problem with that church over there is, you know what, I, I heard some rumor that they're, you know, whatever, whatever it is. And, you know, uh, if it was anything else, it'd be gossip. But now, it's you know, we try to make it something different. But the thing is, uh, you know, <laughs> the, the idea, we need to, to search our hearts. You know, not try to be, not judging everyone else. We need to, is, is that sin, is, it, is there something in my life that's holding our church back? You know, they, uh, I think, I say nowadays, but I think it's probably been down through time. You know, we, want, we don't want to search our own hearts. We want to uh, place blame on somebody else. You know, what's the problem? You know, what, what's the problem there? Well, you know, it's, it's the preacher. You know, it's it's whatever. You know, it's 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 a, a whole list of things, but it's there. Your name's never on that list. But the thing is, Achan was the cause for Israel's defeat. And then we see also that Achan, we see the demise. He was Achan was the cause of his family's demise. He was the cause of his family's demise. We see that uh, how they were dealt with in 25 and 6 of chapter 7. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned him with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. We see that uh, Achan was the cause of his family's demise. As I mentioned before, it, that hidden sin in your life, it affects more than just you. You want to think, well, you know what? It's my life. If I want to do this, well, then that's fine. You know, but you know, it, but, but you know what? It affects more than just you. Right. And many times it will affect your family. You know, you, I, you, we could probably go around the room, and most of you have some, in, in your Christian life, you have uh, probably at least one family and probably more. You could say, you know what, I remember uh, back in, in uh, 
There, there are examples, if you go back far enough in our church, where, where the families, uh, you know, sin got in there and, they, and it, it destroyed their family. Or, and there's other churches. I don't think there's probably a church in America that doesn't have some uh, example, and uh, unfortunately, of where sin got into the family and it destroyed it. You know, they wanted to, to hide that sin instead of confessing it, get it right, and uh, it destroyed a family. You know, there, 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 there are, uh, like I said, many examples. You say, well, well it, it, it'll, it'll destroy them. And uh, we, the, the thing is, uh, it, what, some things I've seen is, first, uh, you know, that person, you know, they might uh, try to get it right or perhaps, but that, that sin has, has destroyed their testimony with their family. And, I, and I've seen, I'm sure you have too. And what a shame that is. And it, the thing is, and not only that, there, there's uh, examples of where uh, sin got into the family and then the children didn't want anything to do with church. Because of sin, it, they, the, the kids decided, you know what, I don't want anything to do with church. I don't want anything to do with God. And as I said, we could, uh, we probably all have examples of that. You probably, just hearing it, you probably like, you probably one or two or three come to mind. But Achan was the cause of his family's demise. He thought he could get away with it. He thought he could, you know, he'd just hide it and, and no one would know. And you think, you know, well, Aiken, what, what was he thinking? I, you know, here he was a children, a child of God, one of the, children, the Israelites. He was all that God had done for him, all that how God had led them, the protection, the victories, everything, the provision. You think, well, you know, why did you know why would he think he could get away with it? But the thing is, before. <laughs> We need to ask ourselves, what, you know, uh, why do we think we can get away with it? You know, we think what we think, you know, God's not watching. We think, God, you know, God will just, uh, he doesn't care. He does care and he does know. We need to guard ourselves and turn to the Lord and get the strength that we need and the help that we need to stand up and, uh, <laughs> as we uh, battle the devil. And not be so arrogant as to think that we can do it on our own. You start thinking that way, you know what? The devil gets excited. You think, well, you know, I can handle him on, on my own. And the devil's like, that's right. You, you know, you should try that. But the thing is, we need to guard ourselves. Aiken made a bad decision. And it, and it snowballed. And we see that it brought the demise to his family. And if we're not careful, if we let that, that sin in our lives and that, that hidden sin in our lives and, and not get it right, not confess it, it's going to destroy our, our life and our family's lives too. You say we're going to death? No, but spiritual, spiritually, uh, you know, no, you're not going to lose your salvation, but you're not going to be any good for the Lord. Your, kid, you know, your children and your, uh, those that are watching you, Aren't, aren't, might turn from the Lord. You might be the reason that they, they get out of church. You might be the reason that they, they have nothing to do with God. We need to guard ourselves because we, if we're not careful, we'll make that a bad decision too and end up destroying our lives and those around us if we're not careful. <clears throat> 